Hello everyone, welcome to one of my Graphic 45 Brand Ambassador videos. My challenge this month was to do an up-leveling of a previous project. So I've gone for this uh, Travel Folio Album by Annette Green. Now if you don't know already, you can go onto the Graphic 45 um, website and you can go to the shop and things, but you can also go to a section where you can download previous uh, projects which are part of the monthly kits. So you can download the instructions and make it using whatever you want. So I chose this one because I do love um, small little albums and I've followed the main idea, but I've given it my own little twist as well because inside you get these four little pages which pull out. Now we'll do a proper little walkthrough of the albums, but I changed the pocket to have the spine method that I like to have. And I also had a little change of sizes in the middle so that I could fit six by four photos. So we've got some inserts. We've got another page which folds out in both directions. And I also changed the pockets as well on the inside. So I'll show you in the basic uh, video for the base and um, how I made my pockets so that you can fit the full um, large tags inside as well and have a nice deep spaced pocket here as well. So that was a change I made. Um, I used this from the tutorial. The pages then can be decorated with your photos. This is a six by four journal card. Um, I used one of the pockets. I might, I changed it a little bit as well. As I said, I changed that to fit six by four photos. And this is the front then the same as the back. So that was a quick flick through, but as I said, I'll do proper little walkthroughs for the video. And for this one, I'm gonna use the Life's A Bowl of Cherries papers. So I've got the 12 by 12, but what I've also got left over from another project is some of the patterns of solids as well. So I may dip into this as well, but it's definitely possible to make it just using a 12 by 12 pack. So I'm gonna put these away and we're gonna get started. So to begin for this project, I'm gonna be using the black chipboard sheets from Graphic 45. Um, they're 12 by 12 and I just need the one sheet. And I'm gonna be using some uh, framers tape or construction tape, which is like a papery black tape, which people use to tape um, the back of uh, photos. So that's why it's called the framers tape, like photo framing. Right, so I'm gonna show you how quick is, if you've got this uh, chipboard, which is a black core one, and the tape, how quick you can actually make an album, uh, the album cover. So I'm just gonna get my arm out. And I'm gonna cut my covers at nine inches tall and five and a quarter wide. So there's five and a quarter. And five and a quarter. And then the spine is one and a half which is what you've got left over from your piece. So it's very economical. So that is my three pieces cut. Now an optional extra is you can use your crocodile to corner around. So I'm gonna use the half inch one. Let's make sure the wings are out. So I'm going to do the two outer ones there. And the two outer ones here. If you haven't got the tape, or you're using regular um, chipboard, if you do download um, Club G45 2021 Volume 5, which is the Annette Green version, um, she shows you how to do it using a paper method to cover the spine. 
but you'll see why I chose this now, how quick we're going to make our cover. So I'm just going to take my tape, I'm going to cut the piece just a bit longer, top and bottom, than my chipboard piece. And I'm going to place it down. Oh, uh, let's do it this way. Let's place it down there. I'm going to take my spine piece, and unfortunately it's black on black, but what I'm doing is lining up these two corners, there and there, holding them all together. I'm going to flip it over, and that'll give me that slight gap in between. I'm just going to pull over the top and bottom, nice and tight, and place some tape down the centre. And what that will do is act as your hinge. So there we go. There's one done. And we're just going to do exactly the same on the other side. So I've got the sticky side up. Place it down the middle. And this I'm going to bring this one over. Hold them together. Flip it over. Just make sure they're apart. And flip it over. And cover the space in the centre. And that is our cover done. Now so you then you can take your a bone folder or your Teflon tool and just iron it out. Iron out any wrinkles. And you've got your cover already done. Now from a crocodile, I've just got a bit of feathering. There we go. Now how quick was that? My folio cover all ready to go. So now we're straight on to decorating and making the pages. So we're gonna start off by doing our inside pages. Now, uh, silly of me, I haven't really picked out because I'm going to um, just go with the flow and we're going to pick stuff out with you. So I do like that page. So that's from the Patterns and Solids. I think from the shape of this, you might be able to work out what one of my projects was. Do you want for the back? I think I'm going to go. I'm trying to pick a page which shows here. So we want some writing. Let's go with this one. So that's going to be my back panel. And then I need some papers. So I'm going to need two of them one for the front and one for the back, which is going to come out from there. So it's got to coordinate with that. But also, I could go with that, that's going to tie in, so let's go with these. Actually, do I'm going to change my mind, I think I'm going to use that as my inside cover, and use these as my pages. Yeah, let's go for that. So let's put away this one. So I've got the Simply Sweet and homemade goodness pages. So I've got one of these and two of these. So the first bits I'm going to do are the patterns and the layers. I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to cut these at eight and three quarters tall. So it's a quarter of an inch shorter than my album. So my album was nine inches tall, so I'm going to eight and three quarters. And my album covers are five and a quarter wide, so I'm going to go down to five for my patterned paper. Five and five. Five. 
And then the two pages, I need to cut at eight to three quarters tall. By 10 and a half. And they're both exactly the same. Eight and three quarters. by 10 and a half. Just put them aside. And we're gonna grab our scoreboard. So the two liners don't need anything. It's these two pages. So the first one I'm gonna do is the one that opens up from the left hand side. So we need to score it half an inch and five and a half. So half and five and a half. Now, if you've got a directional paper, the easiest way to do the second one is to turn it upside down. And then the measurements are exactly the same as what we've just done, half and five and a half. Up. And you can see I really do simplify my measurements. I'm not going to use my cropper dial now. I'm going to use my corner punch because what I found was if you use your corner punch on that half inch one, your 10 millimeter or your large corner rounder actually layers nicely on top when you've got a quarter of an inch less you can see like so you can see that rounded corner actually matches nicely so i'm going to do all four of this page and this page They're going to be glued on there, but not quite yet. So what we're going to do is attach these pages. So this is the one, oh, this is the one with a half inch on the left. So I'm going to fold that one over. Let's go backwards. So that, Fold it back like that. So that's going to tuck under this page. That's where I'm going to glue it. So this page comes over and then we're going to fold this one back. So to tie it all in again, what I'm going to do is with that piece, piece folded, I'm going to bring my corner punch back and I'm going to punch those two. Fold these over and punch those two. And then punch that single one at the end. And I'm just gonna add my tape. So I've got some strong double-sided tape here. This is um, Cool Cat Sticky Paws. And you're gonna glue it on the top of this tab. Like so. And just to help me make sure it's in place, I'm gonna run some glue over the top. So that'll give me some time to get it in the right place. So what I'm gonna do is glue this on top of that one. And what you've got then is this page coming out. Now you may find you'll see some of that corner rounder because everything's moved over a little bit. 
So what you can do is if I can find my scissors. If you don't like that little bit showing, you can just trim it off. No, I haven't done um, distressed ink the uh, edges this time. I'm going to leave it because it's nice, colourful as it is. And we're just using papers. We're not building onto black cardstock like I normally do when I do my album pages. So I'm just going to glue this. This is the inside left. I'm going to glue it on top there. So that's all you want to make sure is you don't go over this hinge there. Otherwise, your album isn't going to open up. So that's the first page. We're going to do exactly the same on this one, but the other way around. So I'm going to fold that half inch backwards this time. So it's going to go in that way and then fold this one back that way. And we're going to corner around uh, everything again. It's not going to go through three, so I'm going to pull that loose one and then do these two afterwards. Some glue on that half inch tab or some tape. trim off those two bits you can but they're not as obvious for me this time so I'm gonna go with it so when I'm gluing I make sure I'm getting some adhesion to the edge let's open it up So there we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten pages ready to go already. And now we're going to start the spine. So to make the spine, I'm first going to um, stick a piece over the spine bit there. And that piece... is going to be... Eight and three quarters. So I'm using that scrap piece I cut from um, my blue pages here. Yeah, it is the blue pages, not the um, decorative one. By one and three eighths. So it's one inch, one, two, three. So just short of one and a half. I'm just going to iron out the edge because I've cut the opposite side to what I had the first time. So this is just going to be my spine cover. So it's going to hide some of that black. So I'm going to put plenty of glue down the centre because I'm going to be adding my spine onto this. So you want it to stick well. So this will fit snugly between your two score lines. And then just even out the top and bottom because you're going to use this to line up your spine in a second. Okay. So you can see it's coming along pretty quick. Just 
put it aside. And now we're going to choose some papers for our main pages. Now you can have some directional paper here, that's fine. But I will show you what you need to do if your paper is directional. So we could keep going with that blue theme and keep all our pages um, in blue. Or let's swap for something. A little bit more pattern, shall we? So I'm looking for something now which has got um, two pattern papers, really, rather than um, image cards. So that'd be quite nice as a page. They could be quite nice. But I think I quite like this because we've got that dark blue coming through, which we had in our album already. So let's go for this. So this is the Hello Sunshine uh, papers. As you can see, it'll pull in that dark blue and also swap to red then when I'm on the other side. Okay, so with our pages, we are going to go back to our trimmer. Nine and a quarter tall. This is nine and a quarter. And I've cut both at the same time. By four and three quarters. So there's four and three quarters. And four and three quarters. Now I've gone for paper where I'm going to use the same one twice. So I'm going to use that on the other side. Now you can choose two totally different pages. I could have gone for this and this. You don't have to have two of the same one. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard. Now these cherries, if I do that, are they going to be this one and this one, which are identical, isn't it? So let's go for these two. So these two are going to be my outside pages. And when you open up the center, you're going to have these two. So what I'm going to do is my page is going to be eight and three quarters tall. So I'm going to score at eight and three quarters. So that is going to be my front page. So on my back one then, I want to make sure I score at half an inch at the bottom. Also, you could make sure the top is this side and mark at eight and three quarters that way. But what you're aiming to do is have one fold at the top and one fold at the bottom. So when you bring them together, you're making that pocket. So that's if you're using directional papers, you need to make sure you're doing one top and one bottom. So I don't want this one now because it would be exactly the same. So let's go for this one. So this is going to be my top. So I'm going to score eight and three quarters at the top. And this is going to be my bottom one. So the top is this side at eight and three quarters. So that's my second one done. We're just going to get our, oh, it's this side, my tape, and I'm going to tape on the back. Here we are. And on this one, I'm going to tape on the back. Let's just have a look. Yes, yeah, so that was. One page, that's got the top. This has got the bottom and I've put the tape on the wrong side. So there we go. Let's do it on the correct one. There we 
these out. So there's that one and that one. So this will be the front, but these two will be the center and then that'll be the back. So, so what I'm gonna do now is tape them together. So I'm gonna remove my tape. I'm gonna tuck this one now inside here. Fold over. Line up the sides and press down. So that's how I keep mine straight. And now when I take this off, I'm gonna fold it down, keep this nice and flat, and stick my pages down. So you've got a nice flat pocket now like so. And I'm going to do the same with this one. I have put tape on this yet. So tape on the flaps. Nice burnish. So you want this to get as flat as you can. That'll help your page to lie flat. So that's the flower side. Nope, oh, that's the um, cherry side. That's the flower side, which I want on the outside. So I'm going to line up the sides. I'm tucking it into that little flap there. I can now take this off. And make sure that's nice and flat. So keeping it nice and smooth. I'm going to lift over, keeping everything nicely lined up down the sides. Oh, I've gone a bit off. Let's just bring it back. And smooth it down. So now I've got my two pocket pages ready to go, but I need a spine now for them to stick onto. And the spine needs to be two inches wide. So let's have a look if we have any scraps which are two inches. So this cherry one is gonna work. So let's have this out. Two inches by eight and three quarters again. So I think this has come off from that sheet, haven't I? Nope, it hasn't. Eight, that was nine, so eight and three quarters. And I'm gonna actually go a little hair's breadth less. That's gonna help my pages to stick on. Let's work on this side, because this is the side which is gonna show up in the middle. I'm gonna score it half and three quarters of an inch. So all the way down that half an inch and three quarters. Turn it around, and I'm gonna go half and three quarters again. And you'll actually sort of feel your spine sort of coming into that U shape already. So this is now totally different to Annette's one. She didn't have this flexi hinge. But what I've got is, once I've folded all four of these score lines, a U shape with an extra flex in it. So that means my pages now are gonna lie quite flat so let's, this is my U shape, which means my tape goes underneath here. And this is gonna go straight onto my Uh, 
cover. That is. So make sure my chair is going the right way. Yep, here we go. And it should be the same height as that spine decoration piece we put in. Yep. Go. Press it down. So that half inch in the middle is now glued down. We've got a quarter of an inch each side then, which is our flexi bit, and then two half inches on the side. So I'm going to put my tape now between the outer and the half inch score line. So I'm making sure I'm not going onto that score line. And just to help, if you take a little notch out between the half inch and that quarter of an inch piece there, your pages can slide on. Rather than trying to get a match up with two straight lines there, it'll slide over perfectly on. So it's just a little tip, so just a little mitre there and there. Okay. So now let's lift these up and fold them back. So I've made sort of like a wing shape and that will help me slide on as well. So I'm going to take all, all the tape off and I'm going to run some glue just to help me ease it on. Otherwise it's going to grab onto that double sided straight away. And I'm going to put some glue down the back as well, just all the way down to seal that side. Otherwise, um, everything is just going to slide out. Open up your page and slide it until you get to that score line. And stop just before. If you go onto it, it's not going to flex. And because we use the same paper, it's all coordinated there. I'm just going to do the other side as well. And the joy of the flexi hinge is, if you haven't put your page on totally straight, um, you won't notice because it fle uh, flexes. There we go. So this time, we're going to slide on on the left hand side, so opening up my pocket, sliding it on. And stopping there. So now we've got that flexy one. They flex into the middle and flex that way. So that is then your album pretty much done. Um, then you can sort of decorate it as you wish. The only thing left to do here is um, your photo mats. So let's should we grab some of the red. Yeah, let's go for the red. Um, your photo mats are eight and a half by four and a quarter. Eight and a half, four and a quarter. So it does mean you can put a six by four photo onto these and have room if you wanted to decorate a bit more. My original one, I've actually taken a corner punch, a circle punch, sorry, and punched um, a little pull tab from there. And I've cut a circle from a waist and folded it over there. But you can see the corners are rounded on this. So let's do the same with my bowl of cherries. So if I went for the big one last time, maybe I'll just go for the 
medium. So this is the seven mil one. There we go. did corner around these as well so i think should i've done them before probably but it's working so i'm using my large one here oh i still got photo matter thinking that was thicker oh, didn't quite go in And here as well. Just put our photo mats in. And then, of course, now that you've made the base, it's up to you how you decorate it. I did show you I did, um, use um, a different method for the pockets that Nanette used. So I'll show you them um, quickly as well. And then I'll talk you through the best, but I might do a little short video to show you some of the other things I'm gonna to add to it. So for my um, pockets, we're gonna need a piece which is gonna coordinate with this. So let's maybe bring in some red. some green or should we go for some plainer colors no let's go for maybe let's keep the blue tones going so because we've got um, two different planes, a pattern and plane. I'm going to take all my pockets from this for the front and the back. So this is the top. So if I've got a directional one, I'm cutting off the bottom here, but it's up to you. I'm going to cut at four inches and a three and a half. So this is going to be my flower ones on the bottom and my plain one on top. So with the flower ones, you want to cut them at five and three quarters. So we're going to cut two of them. And the plain ones, five and three quarters as well. There's one and there's two. Going to bring our scoring to our scoreboard and I'm going to score at half an inch down all four edges. So those are my bottom ones. Then the middle ones, or the top ones, I'm going to score at half an inch down both short. Down a half an inch down the top. So this is non-direction, it's just plain. But if you've got a directional paper, that would be your top. And on the bottom, you're going to score just about one and a half inches. Flip it over, let's do half an inch there. I'm just going to come up about an inch and a half. These are going to be guidelines. So they're not score lines. So you don't want to come to the middle. I did that on my original one because I changed my mind halfway through. And you can see the score line there. So we're trying to avoid that right now. So one more. So half inch down the side, down the top, 
and down the other side. Then at oh, half an inch on the bottom, you can score about one and a half inches down. Flip it up just to get that half inch so you know which groove you're going in and just sort of come up about one and a half inches again. So that then are our pockets all scored. So now we're just going to tape them. So the taping on the bottom we'll do first. So let's move those out of the way. Now the taping method for the two pockets are slightly different. So make sure you watch. I'm going to tape between oh, do you know what? I'm taking on the wrong side. I want it on this side. So let's see if I can remove quickly. Lucky I haven't burnished it down. If it does tear, it's not the end of the world because it is going to be underneath. There we are, rescued. Don't know why I did it that side. I think it's just because I could see the score lines a bit easier than this patterned paper. So we're going to put my tape between the score lines on all four sides. So I'm going to do both of them while I'm here. Let me flip over and grab my scissors. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mitre. So I'm going to cut towards my cross at a 45 degree angle and then just twist my scissors slightly just to get a little bit of a, a sharper angle. So towards the cross and sharper angle and the same here. And the last one. Oh, and I knew I'd do this. I've actually put this on the wrong one as well. This is the one, this is why I had in my mind, one of these is supposed to be on the other side. I want to put my tape on this side because this is actually the top of my pocket. So when I fold it over, I want it to stick down by it. So let's do that. So these three, stick down onto my page. This is gonna stick down to itself. So let's do that so I can explain what I'm doing. The pocket is four and three quarters wide now. So I'm gonna mark halfway. So two would be half of four. Half of the half is a quarter. So two and three eight. And do a score line. If I turn it over, I can do it. I'm going to take my corner punch. Now, this is a thick corner punch, so I should be able to go through it all. I'm lining up the bottom of my circle with that center point. And I'm lined it up with that half inch mark. So when I punch it, I get that. So this one, am I going to be able to get it off? Hopefully, because I didn't burnish it down yet. So hopefully, yes. That goes on the back. So some kinky mitres. This one down, fold these two back, let's 
get that uh, two and three. One, two, three, two and three eighths. There we go. Turn over two and three. So I'm gonna, again, line up the bottom of the circle with that score line. So there's our bottom pocket, and I did round the corners using my large one. Again. Well, actually, I think I might have done my medium. It's too late now. It won't make a huge difference. And these are going to go onto. Oh, no, I did use the large, thank goodness. These are going to tape onto the bottom of here. Take off the two sides. So I'm holding my hand in the middle and sort of ironing outwards. So you could just leave it as this as it is here. So you could just leave it like that and you could have your large tags sticking in there. But I'm going to show you how to do an extra pocket but still keeping that depth. So that full line, that is the top. Now remember how you tape on the back of that one. So it's the same as what we did with that, uh, these ones. And then on the front, we're going to go between the two score lines on the shorter sides. Okay, so it's between there on the back and down there on the sides. And our mite is gonna be different this time. Here's where my score line is. So I'm just going to come slightly in and do a little angle. I could do a little angle here as well. So we're not doing those 45 like we did with the first ones, where here's my score line. So I'm just coming a tiny bit. And then the top, I'm gonna to do those 45 and angles. So let me show you that again. I'm gonna tape the long piece on the back. and between the score lines on the front, on the short side. Because remember those bottom ones are just partial score lines. I get a little bit everywhere today. It's from the corner punch and the angles. So small angles, big angles. Big angle on the top, and small angles on that one. So now we're gonna fold that one back, fold these two back, and you'll have that. This one is taped down. my bone folder down somewhere. Did you spot where I put it? I can't have misplaced that so easily. Surely not. I'll just give them a little run. Well, that's very strange. And I'm going to do the same as I did with the top one. I'm going to mark on the back at two and three. Eight. Fold this one. 
and mark it at two and three eighths. Oh, I unfolded over the edge. I thought it wasn't in the middle. Two and three eighths. And again, just sort of center it. So the bottom of the circle is at that score line. And the bottom of the circle is at that score line. Ah, here's my bone folder. So now it's only those two sides which have got adhesive. When we turn them over, these bond bits have no tape. I'm going to take off the side bits. And now I'm using those two score lines to stop at the top of my pockets. So I'm lining it up with the tops here. That, so that's why I didn't score all the way. Making sure the sides are set. And there we go. So now, your photo, so your photo mat, or whatever you put in, don't stop there if I put the glue normally, but it goes all the way. So you've got two pockets, like so. so let's do the other one as well. Take off the tape. I'm just tucking it into this pocket and taking it down to that score line. I may need to just make it a little bit sharper. Slid in this time. So there we go, that's the inside pockets done. So that is then the base of your folio as done by Annette Green. She used the catch of the day. I've got um, Life's a Bowl of Cherries. Of course, it's not done yet. I can now go back in and I can do my um, circle punches there and things. So if you keep an eye out, out, I'll probably do a second video to show you how to add all the extra bits and the finishing touches, um, such as this double pocket, which is also in the catch of the day, but I've changed the sizing. Um, this central page, if you want to add some more and some, um, angled pockets as well. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how the base was made and how quickly it can come together. So in less than an hour, I've made the cover, the pages, um, some pocket pages with photo mats and some sliding pockets as well. So a nice, quick, easy make. So thank you to Annette Green for the idea. I said, that's all I've done is changed up some of the measurements and added my own um, spine method, which I like using in the middle. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I said, keep an eye out as well for um, some more ideas on how to decorate. Mm -hmm.